Hi everyone, this is Mert and here at eCommerce, we continue to talk about all things e-commerce, digital transformation, future technology and the blockchain. Headless commerce is still a buzzword in the CPG universe like big data once was. Many people talk about it, not sure if every one of those really understands it. So do you have one in place? Is it smart enough for your business needs? But what does it actually mean and how does it work? ATG, SAP Hybris, Adobe Magento, IBM WebSphere, Demandware, Salesforce have something in common. Those were the legacy e-commerce platforms introduced in the 90s as an all-in-one solution for sellers and the consumers using desktop computers for e-commerce. And they were often referred to as monolith because they were inherently rigid and built with a fixed set of rules from user experience to the supported channel. And fast forward today, with the rise of mobile devices, internet-based devices, and even refrigerators being considered as revenue streams, the rules of digital commerce have changed. So the addition of new digital touch points to the shopper journey, which these original platforms were not built for, the ever-increasing consumer expectations for modern, engaging digital experiences, and the steady rise of digital commerce as a primary channel for most businesses to engage and convert customers has changed all of that. So no single vendor or platform can offer all of the applications needed to deliver e-commerce experiences that meet the demands of today's shoppers. Let's dial it back a little and talk about what headless commerce is. Headless is a technology that allows separating the back end from the front end. All right, that sounds pretty straightforward. And why is this separation beneficial again? It simply allows for better optimization of the website, adjusting it to the user's expectations, or experimenting on the front end without contacting the back end. Now it's getting a little bit interested, isn't it? So then we have microservices. The microservices architecture is used in modern systems and it consists of a combination of both internal and external services connected via their APIs. And in such a model, each service is self-sufficient and pursues a specific business goal. So unlike monolithic architecture, which was based on one common engine, when we want to make a change in a particular service, we basically work on a specific microservice rather than building a system from scratch. So before we get into the complicated parts, then let's talk about how headless commerce works. So the front end of our site or app is on the first level at the top, and different components of the front end are developed independently for different devices. So because of this, as many touch points or customer channels as our brands may have, we can have that many front ends connected to one backend. And the backend of our site or app is on the second level from the bottom. It's consisted of microservices, which are independent coding blocks, basically. And each one of them works with its own database. So for example, your brand store can have separate microservices for a product catalog, on-site search, shopping cart, checkout page, payment, CMS, or customer service. And our database is at the bottom. This is where we collect and organize information about our brand store. So we have customization. You can customize your front end with your brand identity and UX design principles without template or platform limitation. Then you have sandbox environment, which you can run UX experiments, A-B test specific parts of the site without jeopardizing the whole ecosystem. And out of the box agility, one of my favorites, you can implement new UX changes faster since you don't have to redeploy a backend system when working in a decoupled environment. And then we have a scalability. The front end and back end can be scaled independently so that even if the front end receives a lot of traffic, the commerce functions are not impacted in the back end. And finally, the analyst touch point. So if you want to add a mobile app or social channels or even an in-car marketplace shop, and you can do it quickly. So you don't have to build a business case for a new back end every time you need to add a new front end. So headless commerce can be personalized for different regions. For global brand sites, depending on the geolocation and the messaging behind, products could match the intended audience. And you can create a subset of page content for apps or sites in the backend of a headless CMS, allowing different region-specific channels to pull matching messaging for any given audience. And the result? Tailored messaging increases successful conversion. There are extensive conversion opportunities available 
in many different devices and applications. And endpoints can be adapted to funnel visitors into systems that provide them with the information or resources they are seeking from our brands, such as the purchase, conversion, recipe, loyalty perks, and so forth. So depending on the use case, businesses can use headless commerce with a decoupled kind of front end or a traditional monolith system, also called head optional. And also headless commerce helps to overcome language obstacles. Obviously that's quite straightforward. List all the current platform offers you have, what they don't offer and set your priorities. And then make sure you get alignment from your digital marketing teams before the launch. Decide when you want to migrate your front end, how, and when you'll move the product catalogs and data, user profiles, and the product orders. Besides your data and IT systems, your digital marketing people need to be involved in this process, especially for defining your objects, sub skews and the attributes. Even though this is a technical task, digital marketing owners and stakeholders of this process should verify your data in the new ecosystem. At the end of the day, this will impact their day-to-day -day procedures. So what is the next step? A little hint maybe? It's the composable commerce, and we can talk about it in another newsletter. But in summary, composable commerce leverages modern technologies and approaches like Mac and the Jamstack to meet the expectations and the experience needs of today's shopper. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.